What you should know about COVID and aging. Welcome back to Text the Nation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us is Dr. Florence Kamate, who taught at the Yale School of Medicine for 24 years as CEO of Grok Health and is one of the authors of a new study that found even mild cases of COVID can make you age faster well after symptoms are gone. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Kamate. I appreciate being invited. Well, tell us about this study, and this involved quite a few uh, researchers, correct? It did. There were multiple authors because it was a combined effort from Yale School of Medicine, Cornell, and Mount Sinai. And what we found is that even mild cases of COVID can cause aging faster, long after the symptoms are gone. And what we believe is happening is that the body has to rise to a response when you get ill, any illness. And COVID itself, you know, was can be quite difficult for many people. Underlying the surface, the immune system has to kick in. And the age difference we saw below 50 and above 50 suggests that as we age, our body has less, fewer reserves to actually respond. And the immune system is probably the trigger underlying it. Does that make sense? It does. Now, does it matter how old you are when you contract COVID as far as the, this, this aging is concerned? Probably uh, just in terms of the older you are, the more likely that you have other what we call comorbidities under the surface, whether it's diabetes or um, the possibility of heart disease with elevated cholesterol and other issues. And those comorbidities in a way are undermining your health. You may feel fine. And so age itself is what one determinant, but I think it really masks the underlying health we have at the cellular level, whether we look at it metabolically, hormonally, whether we look at your health story, what's your lifestyle like, how do you sleep, how well you eat, and every one of us is different. So age itself can be a factor. 50 happened to be the age in this pilot study. Now, you also found evidence that the COVID vaccine can help reverse the body's aging process by nearly four years in, in people over 50. I think there'll be a lot of interest in that. Tell me about <laughs> Exactly. It. Well, first, we have to recognize that this may be a transient process because we're looking at what happens with the body aging when you get a vaccine. Your body has to respond to that vaccine. Some of us had really amazing uh, recovery, like we'd even know we got a vaccine and others got pretty ill. I myself got pretty ill with the initial vaccine and then slightly less so with the second one. My twin sister who got the vaccination had a response to not quite as bad as I did. And I think what we're seeing again is, a, is an activation of the immune system. And once we rev up the immune system, there could be gains afterwards. So it doesn't just appear right away. So we mounted a response and then our body wants to continue to stay strong and that response doesn't disappear right away. So what's gonna be interesting is to look further down the line to see exactly what happens epigenetically because that means the changes in the DNA could affect us both acutely with the vaccinations and maybe people who are on the fence about it would be more interested and maybe even long-term. I understand that you you caught uh, COVID early on when this when this all started. Tell us what your experience was like. And uh, goodness gracious, I mean, that early on it was so frightening. It still is, but it was more frightening then. Oh, I completely agree, Fred. Um, it's scary, and I used to cry. I was home for six weeks. I I was diagnosed. I was tested March 18th. I volunteered to be the guinea pig in my office. And that was a Wednesday. It was my birthday too that week, March 16th. <laughs> so needless to say, it wasn't the birthday present you want. And then I was diagnosed. I was getting ready for work on Monday. And I was called and, and said, stay home. You're not coming in. You're positive in both different laboratories. So I was lucky enough as a physician to have access and to be tested. Subsequently, I did okay. I worked long hours. And in retrospect, probably the sequelae I'm left with is a difficult time eating eggs and sushi, which is interesting. Those are two of my favorite foods. Um, and it's now beginning to dissipate, but imagine it's been two and a half years almost. 
And um, while I felt fine during the COVID, during COVID itself, I had some side effects. There were some treatment we did with supplements. It was so new. My real focus was on understanding people who were so ill and how they were going to survive. And a lot of my doctor colleagues ended up on respirators. What I'm happy to report is that not one of our patients, not one of them, even went to the hospital in the first year. So many got COVID, but they actually did superbly well because we're looking at the biomarkers, we're looking at the way you live life, and we're fine tuning with interventions so we can maintain our health. I didn't even see a doctor. I, obviously, I am one, but we don't always like or think it's a good idea to treat ourselves. I have a wonderful team here, though, and they took care of me. And since then, I so far, so good. I've actually gotten vaccinations, but no boosters, because the other thing we do here is we look at um, our antibody system. And once we determine that antibodies are still high, and they're a stand-in for probably what's going on at a deeper level, but we don't necessarily go forward to recommend boosters. Is that, is that any questions about well, Yeah, I guess the, the message is we are all individuals and uh, with different makeups, et cetera. But it is confusing for people whether or not they should be wearing masks today. Most people are so tired of it, they don't want to when, they, when they're out and about. And now we're seeing the reports about the, the new variants uh, spreading rapidly and other stories saying if you're getting COVID more than once, each time it multiplies the chances that you're going to have problems later on. So tell us what your thoughts are and what would you tell patients? So from the very beginning, actually, before my diagnosis, that Friday night, I was in the office until nine o'clock writing a statement for everybody who worked with us and begging them to wear masks because the, the uh, CDC had not come out with that yet. And I felt just in terms of knowing medicine, how things transmit, that this was a respiratory virus that was going to infect a lot of folks who didn't realize how serious it could be until we knew more. And wearing a mask, if you can bring yourself, and you can see, actually, I'll show and tell, I found these beautiful chains, and I wear masks that I got very early on in a from a company. I ended up, because we were just beginning with Grok, you could see our Grok logo. It's a zinc-infused mask that actually is just as good as a N95, and I believe that when I need it, I put it on. Now, I'm not a, a lover of masks either, but I do want my health and I don't want to get COVID over and over because I do feel that it wears you out at the immune system level. And so I would strongly recommend for those who can tolerate it when you're beyond your own personal friends and family, you're in an airport, it's crowded, you went to an event like a game, a baseball game, you go to an amusement park, you're out with your grandchildren or your children, and you know there's going to be very, it's going to be very difficult if someone doesn't feel well to tell them cover your mouth or make sure it's not enough. Take that mask with you, wear it around your neck like we wear glasses sometimes, and make sure we put it on because unless we're in prime health, and it's very difficult unless we know more about each of us cells, it's very difficult to stop it. So that's number one. Also be up to date on your boosters. So if you don't have access to getting antibodies regularly, then do get boosters, particularly if you've tolerated them in the past and they're not an issue. Switch off the boosters. So if sometimes you got Moderna, go get Pfizer because they're different and they should be synergistic with each other. And um, those are the tenants that we follow. We also have a supplement program when someone is diagnosed or exposed to COVID, like a husband and wife or partners. Um, we then look at ways to, to rev up the immune system to help. So there are particular supplements we're highly in favor of. And I'm happy to share that with you and your um, followers. Sure. What do what what would you recommend? So there are there is a sub, there is a substance that is called Umera, U, Umavera, Umavir, Umavir. Sorry, U, H U M A V I R, and it's a substance where you take it twice a day. It's a supplement, and you're able to 
um, strengthen your immune system. Some folks who've used this a long time feel that it's actually helped them avoid COVID and avoid getting sick. Then we also have strong believers in vitamin D and having levels of vitamin D that are adequate. For us, a level of vitamin D of above 60 is really superb and it's best to have a measurement, ask your doctor to measure your vitamin D, because even though some of us take vitamin D, we may not be absorbing it. It has to be taken with fat. It's fat, um, uh, it's fat, um, phyllic, meaning it, the fat needs to absorb it. So you can't take it on a fasting stomach. You don't want to take a lot of it if stones run in your family or you have kidney stones made of calcium. We also use zinc which I think has been very useful. As I mentioned earlier, I lost my taste for eggs, which I love. It was my go-to protein. It was actually a treat for me weekends to have breakfast with eggs. And I can't eat them anymore, although it's starting to come back because I'm increasing my zinc level, I believe. So those, and vitamin C, probably that's the last one. C, D, D is water soluble, D is fat soluble, and zinc, and along with um, Umavir. Those are, that's the package that we strongly recommend and we share with our patients as well. When, when we're outdoors, uh, family gatherings or even people go to concerts, especially in the summertime, et cetera, what's the recommendation today with this new variant? Should we be wearing masks even outdoors? There's that, that's a great question because there's some data that suggests that masks don't prevent the latest variant, which seems to be ubiquitous. And it seems to me I turn around and another person has it. But I still believe it's the best defense in a crowded area. If you can keep your distance, like if you're in an outdoor concert and you can sit on your own you know, blanket or chairs, do that. Don't encourage people coming near you, particularly people you don't know. And if they do say you're trying to avoid COVID or spreading it, use the excuse that perhaps you don't feel so well and you want to make sure you keep people protected around you and carry that mask with you. I think the most helpful thing for me and not everybody loves it. I happen to think if you can find these pretty chains and, and match it to your jewelry, uh, they're flattering and you have it right there and then you don't have to search for it. Um, I like the cotton mask now, although to be fair, when I started, I would only use a hospital grade mask. I got very tired of it. You get reactions under your surface. The first responders have to be very grateful for what they live through. So finding a cotton mask that's infused. Zinc is the most tolerant, I think, of all the infusions. So I really love these masks. And we, you can get them from us, but you can also find them online. Um, the company actually who created it from Israel has won many awards. They were in this business for a long time. And you may know this, but during COVID, the incidence of flu, influenza went down dramatically because people were quarantining and they weren't coughing and sneezing and spreading it. And in a way, COVID has become like the flu. So if you want to protect yourself, if you're anxious about the fact that you have to be there for an elderly relative or a young child or work, or even have fun playing, you want to take care of yourself. Like, who likes being sick? I certainly don't. I treasure my health even more when I had COVID because I realized how lucky I was that I know enough to stay healthy under the surface even. I don't want diabetes or heart disease or an infection. And I think we all know that. We just have to look at diseases like cancer or AIDS to understand that as people get weaker, they don't have the resources to tackle an infection and COVID was a very, very challenging infection at the beginning. I'm grateful for the first responders and doctors who came up with solutions at the bedside because that's what we're trained to do. So we've made a ton of progress, but we're not there yet. And as I said before, we are all so tired of it, but is it something, what's your sense that we're just going to have to live with and, and work around or the foreseeable future, at least? I think until we figure out a way to get rid of viruses and get everyone as healthy as possible to own their own health destiny, bugs are going to be infecting us. We're a global world right now. It spreads very easily. Of course, we've all heard recently monkeypox and where that's coming. It is coming. 
So I think COVID is going to fall into the category of a flu-like illness. And the more we can protect ourselves, and that means considering wearing a mask. I'm not saying it's the right fit for everybody. It depends on your desire to live a healthy life and to protect your future health destiny. Multiple attacks of COVID have been shown to be more and more detrimental for individuals. Again, I think that's because as we age and as we get sicker, we're getting sicker. So our system can only take so much. We're weakening our system. When we're younger, we know we can rise to the occasion. We know not everybody died from the, the flu in the early 19th century. Um, and we know that diseases, you know, don't affect everyone the same way. So we have a concept here. Our core concept is N of one, meaning that take it seriously that you yourself may have a different path even than your siblings, or certainly even a twin, and look into your health. And that's why I want to bring Brock Health to everybody, because at the center, it's a bespoke system, and we are giving people very clear directives about what's going on, understanding everything from their genome to the way they work out to their sleep, which is a paramount sleep. It's probably one of the most important aspects of health and sustaining health. And to the extent we can actually look at ourselves and understand what is going down in our system below the level of the surface, the more we can make a difference in surviving COVID and going from strength to strength, if you will, the way this paper shows. Our papers show that younger, likely healthier, fewer comorbidities did better. And actually, when they got through COVID, their biological age, just like the vaccination, was younger. Whereas as we age above 50, it looked like in this pilot study that we actually declined. And our immune system brought us through the condition of COVID. We survived, but we're tackled by other issues that were probably not served as well while our body was distracted. It's like, follow, it's like fighting battles on many fronts. For more information, where's the best place for people to go? They can go to grokhealth.com. And then there are a couple of other papers, one published in Nature, an, our paper in Frontiers. I'm happy to share the um, information with you if you'd like by link so you can send it out to your followers and post it. Terrific. And uh, the site for Grok Health is grok, G-R-O-Q, health.com. Dr. Florence Comite, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you.